Juliet, to get us started, um, talk about how a, how a child gets started in life, the importance of um, good health, nutrition, a good start to life, and what is the basis and the foundation? What are the principles that have to be in place for a young person to have the best chance getting started? Thank you, Brian. Ideally, a child would be born to a well-nourished mother. Um, I would actually amend that and say a well-nourished and well-educated mother, having received adequate prenatal care and having a supportive partner who ideally would also be educated and well-nourished. Thereafter, the child would be exposed to education, preschool education, that focused especially on creativity and learning a lot of the soft skills that would make them relevant adults. Negotiation, inter -com interpersonal conflict management, sharing, um, it's very important that preschool education be supervised to provide these skills adequately for preschoolers. Um, what tends to happen in some of the countries that I've worked in in Africa is that the government has said we need preschool education, but has not contributed, not even official guidance as to how those should be set up. And so people establish warehouses for preschool children, for want of a better term, where they're not being taught the prerequisite skills that are so important in this very, very vulnerable period. Over the past several decades, our educational services and our health services in much of Africa have attenuated because there's been a huge emphasis on hard infrastructure if we were to look at human beings as soft infrastructure, the hard infrastructure, I will give you an example, would be what pertains in Ghana, where we have big hospitals, many clinics built by various foreign companies and agencies for the good of the Ghana people, but we don't have the human capacity to fill them with medical stuff. So they sit idle, unused, whilst there are people living in the communities around them without access, adequate access to good, basic health care, unless they can afford to go into the private arena. And the same thing pertains in the educational sphere. If you have the money, you can afford to go to some of the private educational institutions that are now being built by private entrepreneurs. But the majority of the country, the majority of the nationals, have to attend a very poorly resourced <coughs> public institution, where, of course, they get churned out undereducated for the jobs that need to be uh, filled once they come out. And so it was alluded to earlier, we have huge numbers of populations, young populations in Africa. 65% of our population is under 25 years of age. We have huge numbers of young, un undereducated persons that result from these uh, poor investments, if you will, in health and education. And Julia, why, you know, the, a lot of times there's an even greater emphasis on education of girls and early childhood education and primary education. Why, why is that? What's the, what's the greater leverage of investing in, in young girls? This is because it, within Africa we have very strong cultural traditions that disempower girls, particularly as they transition from 13 to 15 years of age, where they are considered now reproductive beings rather than girls or young girls capable of going to school and learning. And certainly the empowerment of young girls through education has enormous dividends. Uh, somebody alluded uh, to how high the fertility rate was as per Emmanuel Macron. But this is only in certain parts of the continent. Where you have high levels of young girls being educated, especially at the younger levels, you will find that the fertility rates have actually gone down and that they're uh, delivering on average around 2.4 uh, children per person, not eight and nine, as you will find in, in the areas where they're under or non-educated.